Hey there, Super Conscious Success fam, and welcome back. Before we can continue, can I please ask that you subscribe to this channel? And if the video resonates, please like the video so that I may get this content out to as many people as possible. Now, in this video, I'm actually going to be discussing something that is extremely close to my heart, as indicated by the name of my channel, Superconscious Success. For those that are not aware yet, the term superconscious is a term that is also used to describe our higher self. Now, this seems fitting considering in this video, we are actually going to be talking about how you can differentiate between the ego and the higher self. Now, when we hear the term ego, we start to think of the highly inflated person that is destined to make people around them feel much smaller. However, this is not what we mean when we talk about the ego. The ego is simply the self that is in touch with the external world purely by way of perception. So it's our sense of identity and how we view ourselves to be in front of everyone else. It's our self-image of who we are. And unfortunately, it's the belief that we are actually separate from that of our creator. Now, as we evolve spiritually, our higher self takes the reins and our ego is suppressed just a little bit as we begin to realize in actual fact that we are all one and that there is no such thing as separation. Now, our ego is born from the time we are babies and from the time others started dictating to us who we were supposed to be, what we were supposed to look like, and also what belief systems we were supposed to uphold. Now, our limited belief system, which is ingrained from about the age of seven, is what will dictate what our egoic self sees and what it experiences. Now, the ego can unfortunately be our downfall when it comes to success or manifestation because it makes decisions from a place of fear. Now, it's always in self-protection mode and so tries at all times to protect us from emotions like shame and vulnerability and failure. However, this limits us with what we believe ourselves capable of doing and it stops us from wanting to move outside of our comfort zones. Where the higher self comes from a place of love and joy, the ego comes from a place of fear and anxiety. Now, it's the ego which believes that there is a me versus a you concept, and it's deeply attached to the material world around us. Now, the amazing thing is that once you begin to understand the ego, then all fear starts to dissipate. The ego is that part of us that looks outside of ourselves and it interprets the world that's around us based on our five senses. So therefore, the ego may watch the news and become fearful because of something that it has seen, or it will take one of your beliefs and interpret it as being true. Now, our ego lives in a state of fear, always on the lookout for something being wrong and always in a state of self-protection. Now, the goal of the ego is simply to separate us from our higher self or source so that it's able to survive. So how does it do this? Our ego believes that power, understanding and truth lies in separation, which is completely the opposite of what our higher self knows as being true power. And that is one of unity. Now, our ego will start to look at our beliefs and attack everything that it perceives by breaking it into small, disconnected parts, ensuring that we are separate from source at the same time. Now, it will focus on error and it will overlook that of truth. So I guess you could say that everything that's outside of the realm of love and peace is actually the work of your ego. So I guess if you're looking at it right now, you'd be asking, so what is the good of having an ego? Doesn't sound very good, does it? But without it, we wouldn't be able to function. It's our ego that helps us make realistic and effective decisions. And it helps us tell the difference between right and wrong. It's the regulatory part of us that instructs us to eat, to sleep, and also gives us the fight or flight instinct. However, sometimes when we listen to the ego part of ourselves, we begin to wonder whether we're good enough. We start to doubt ourselves and we always try to prove ourselves so we can show that we're lovable enough or we're strong enough or we're powerful enough. We also start to blame everything and everyone else. And this is where the victim mentality comes in. We start to blame everything else for how our life is and what's happening in our life. And we fail to take responsibility for anything. Now, anybody that knows me knows that I believe that once we start taking responsibility, then that's when we can truly shift. That's when we can truly grow because nobody else is responsible for where we are in our life right now. Nobody except for us. No matter what we've gone through, no matter what we've been through, 
we can change it and we can alter it and we can change our perception of it and we can start to heal through it. And that is our responsibility. That is nobody else's responsibility to heal us from what we've gone through in our life. So how do you know if you are working from your ego or if you're working from your higher self? The first sign is how you're feeling. So when you think of something or you start to do something, do you feel negative emotions such as anxiety or fear or um, doubt? Or are you feeling light and positive? If fear is in the mix, then it is most definitely not your higher self and you're actually working from the ego. But if you are basing your life on how you can please someone else or what will make someone else happy for fear of making them upset or angry, then you're also working from that place of the ego because you are depending on other people for your happiness. Or what about when you judge other people for their choices? What about if you judge other people for how they are living their life? Well, that is the place of the ego. And that is based on an accumulation of our limited beliefs, our belief system that we have accumulated from the age of up until about the age of seven and onwards as well. Now, if you're trying to protect yourself from something such as fear of abandonment, fear of success, whatever it is, then this is also the ego at play because this is trying to, the ego is trying to keep you within that box. And one of the greatest ways to be able to grow and to expand and, and to really become that true version of yourself is to get out of that comfort zone, try new things, experience new things. When we stay in a place of um, comfort, then that can actually block us from really expanding. So you may be asking right now, if the ego is so terrible, what about our higher self? How can I tell if I'm working from that place of my super conscious or my higher self instead. So the topic of the higher self is, of course, my greatest passion. And in fact, it's so much of a passion of mine that myself and my really close friend and soulmate, Eleni, um, have created a program or we're in the process of creating a membership called Higher Self Mastery. And this is really about helping you to dive deep into that higher self, to connect with the higher self, to channel with it, and to really... Um, take full advantage of, of your higher self's um, perception of you so that you may be able to manifest and success and abundance and everything else that you're looking for. So how can you tell if you're working from that place of the higher self? It is that higher self that allows us to manifest success and wealth into our lives amongst all of our other manifestation desires. Now, unlike the ego, our higher self does not believe in separation. It knows that we're all one and it only ever resides in that place of love and joy. Now, it's our real self, our true self, our authentic self. And it's the highest part of us that knows exactly where we're going and the path of least resistance to get there. The higher self is not physically present in this world, but it's able to be accessed at any time through your thoughts and through meditation. Now, it's that voice inside of us that guides us to do the right thing, no matter what it allows us, no matter what, it allows us to make better decisions in regards to who we are and what we're truly capable of. Now, as we evolve spiritually, we become more connected to our higher self, to that part of us, and we begin to live more from a place of love, intuition, and calm energy. We start to take responsibility for our lives, and we know that everything that happens does so for a reason, and that any abundance or lack thereof is due to the life that we have created for ourselves. Now, when you're truly connected to your higher self, you begin to ask some very important questions. You begin to ask what you can create and what you can build. What can you do that's interesting and intriguing and valuable? How can your creations help those that need it? You start to ask how you can connect. Who are the people that you would like to connect with and why is connection so important? Then you focus more on contribution. You move away from doing everything for the purpose of making millions of dollars to a place where you ask what you can do to contribute to others and to society as a whole. Now, that's not saying that making millions of dollars is not great because it is, but we're talking about really that connection side of it. So thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope that you learned a lot. I hope that now you are excited about connecting to that higher part of you. Remember, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if this has offered some value to you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, catch you later. Bye.